Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. While browsing social media recently, I was pleasantly surprised to see an investment bank interview question go viral. This is a quantitative interview question about probability that has over 1.4 million views on X. Oxford Mathematics covered a very similar problem on its YouTube channel, and their short form video about the problem has over 2.2 million views. When I see a problem like this go viral on two very big platforms, it's a social signal to me that it's an interesting problem. But lately, I will share that when I cover these problems on YouTube, my views are going down and I'm getting messages from YouTube like my subscribers are choosing to watch the videos less than normal. This is not to complain or to say there's something wrong about YouTube. This is to tell you that I am going to keep experimenting. When I see an interesting problem, I do think it's worth covering and there could be something wrong I'm doing. I need to up my game in my title, my thumbnails, and maybe I've been out of touch with my content and what problems are interesting to you. So please email me and share me your interesting problems. I would love to cover them. So with that said, let me cover this problem. You have 100 noodles in your bowl. Yes, you did take the time to count every single noodle in your bowl. We will visualize the noodles as being separate and just put them for illustration purposes side by side. You randomly select two noodle ends and connect the ends. By random, that means each end on any noodle has an equal probability of being chosen. So let's say you randomly pick this end and you randomly have picked the other end of the same noodle. So you go ahead and connect the ends. When you do that, you're going to form a loop on this noodle. Now you might also randomly pick this noodle end and then you pick this noodle end and then you go ahead and connect those ends and you will create a much longer noodle. You repeat the steps until there are no free ends on any noodle. What is the expected number of loops in the end? What is the probability of making one large loop of all 100 noodles? Now, let me just put all details of the question up on the screen. For the people who want to give the problem a try, now is a good time to pause the video. You can try this problem. And when you're ready, you can keep watching and come back to see how I solve the problem. Let's get started with the first problem of finding the expected number of loops. And I'm going to show a solution that uses mathematical induction. So let's just work out a simple case where we have n is equal to one, we just have one noodle. I will set up some notation, but x1 be a random variable denoting the number of loops you will make when you start with one noodle, x1 for one noodle. Now, when we select two ends, there are only two ends we can pick. So necessarily, we're going to create one loop. So we will always get one loop in this case and the expected number of loops e of x1 is equal to one. Now let's solve n equals two where we have two noodles. Let x2 be the number of loops when we start with two noodles. So we need to randomly grab two ends. Let's suppose the first end we grab is this end without loss of generality. What is the other end we can grab? One possibility will be the other end of the same noodle. I've marked this as a green cross or we could grab the two ends of the other noodle, which will be the red crosses. Now we can calculate E of X2 by the law of total expectation. E of X2 will be equal to E of X2 conditional on selecting the green cross times the probability of selecting the green cross plus E of X2 condition on selecting the red cross times the probability of the red cross. Now there are three possible things we can pick. One of them is green, two of them are red. So the probability of selecting the green cross is one out of three and that of the red cross is two out of three. So we can substitute that into the equation. Now let's see what happens when we select the green cross. In that case, we are going to form a loop because we selected two ends of the same noodle. 
So we've increased the number of loops by one, and we are left with one noodle left. So E of X2 conditional on selecting a green cross will be equal to one plus the expected value when you have just one noodle. So that's E of X1. Now let's work out if you had selected the red cross instead. If you select a red cross that connects with this original point, we will end up connecting these two points and creating one much longer noodle. So what happens here, we haven't created any loops, but we are just left with one noodle. So in that case, E of X2 given red will exactly be the situation when we're left with just one noodle, which is E of X1. So we now just need to simplify this equation to get what E of X2 is equal to. Distribute the one third, and then we have one third E of X1 plus two thirds E of X1, and this will simplify to be equal to E of X1. So E of X2 is equal to one over three plus E of X1, and we previously calculated E of X1 was equal to one, so this is equal to one over three plus one. I will leave it in this summation form so that we can see the pattern later. Now let's work out n equals three, where we have three noodles. Let x3 be the number of loops when you start with three noodles. Let's say you randomly select one of the ends and you select this point. Now what can happen? You could select the same noodle end, or there are four noodle ends you can pick, which will be on the other two noodles. Now once again, e of x3 will be equal to e of x3 given green times the probability of green plus e of x3 given red times the probability of red. The probability of green is one out of five and the probability of red is four out of five. So we can substitute those values into the equation. Now what happens when we pick the green cross? We will end up creating one loop and then we will be left with two noodles that we can connect the ends of. So e of x3 given green will be equal to one plus the situation where we have two noodles left. So we have e of x2. Now what if instead we picked a red cross? We will then be connecting these two noodles together. So we will have two noodles left. We will have this very long noodle and the other noodle that we haven't touched. So e of x3 given red will be the same situation when we have two noodles. So this will be equal to e of x2. So all we need to do is simplify this equation. Now once again, we distribute one over five. We have one over five e of x2 plus four over five e of x2. So this will all simplify to be e of x2. So e of x3 will be equal to one over five plus e of x2. e of x2 was equal to one plus one over three. So we write this as one over five plus one over three plus one. We can now see a pattern developing e of x4 will have plus 1 over 7, e of x5 will have plus 1 over 9, and so on. So e of xn will be equal to the sum of the fractions of odd numbers. 1 over 2 on minus 1, plus 1 over 2 on minus 3, and so on, all the way down to 1. This is our conjecture, but how do we know that this formula will always hold? We will prove this by mathematical induction. Suppose that the formula is true up to k. We've already worked out the base cases of k equals one, two, and three. Now suppose we have k plus one noodles. We want to show that the formula is still true. So let's say we randomly select this end. There is one case of this green cross where we will create a loop, but on all of the other noodles, we will end up creating a much longer noodle. So we can set up our same expectation based on whether we select a green cross or a red cross. And we already know what happens. If we select a green cross, we're going to create one loop and we'll have k noodles left. And the probability of selecting that green cross will be one over two k plus one. If we select a red cross, we know that we're going to end up with just one fewer noodles. We're gonna create one longer noodle, so we have k noodles left. And the probability of this is 2k over 2k plus 1. So we substitute this into the formula. And now let's focus on this formula. Now we have e of xk multiplied by 1 over 2k plus 1 and e of xk multiplied by 2k over 2k plus 1. The sum of these is going to be equal to 1. So this is going to simplify to be e of xk. 
Therefore, e of xk plus 1 is equal to 1 over 2k plus 1 plus e of xk. We can now use the induction hypothesis to substitute for e of xk, and this will be exactly the formula we want for e of xk plus 1. This completes the proof, and our formula is always true. Wow! All that remains to solve the problem is to apply the formula to n is equal to 100, and we find the expected number of loops for 100 noodles is 1 over 199 plus 1 over 197 plus so on, and this is all approximately equal to 3.28 loops. And I think it's pretty interesting that when you start out with 100 noodles, you're only going to end up with about three different loops. So there are going to be some pretty long loops that you're going to generate. This is an unexpected result to me. Now I've presented one way to solve the problem, but there's also another way I want to present it that uses the linearity of the expectation operator. So logically in a round, two things can happen. One option is you select two ends from the same noodle. You're going to connect these ends and you're going to create one loop. So when you create one loop, this happens with the probability of selecting two ends from the same noodle this happens with probability 1 divided by 2n minus 1, and you are left with only the remaining ends that you could pick from the other noodles. So there will be one fewer noodle left in total. So let me then reset the diagram, and there's another possibility. You could select two ends that are from different noodles. Now when you join these ends, you're going to create a longer noodle. So you haven't created a loop, but you have created a longer noodle. This happens with probability 2n divided by 2n minus 1. And once you take this as one noodle, the total number of noodles will no longer be n, it will be n minus 1. So these two noodles are one, so there will be one fewer noodles left in total. So to summarize what can happen, you can either make a loop or you will not make a loop. But either way, the next round will have one fewer noodle that you're going to pick ends from. Now this may seem obvious, but I'm going to define it very carefully because the presentations I've seen online have not actually precisely calculated the answer correctly. So now let me define a random variable xk that's equal to 1 if you make a loop in round k and 0 if you do not make a loop in round k. We've already calculated the associated probabilities of these events. E of xk will be equal to 1 times the probability of making a loop plus 0 times the probability you do not make a loop, and this will simplify to be 1 divided by 2k minus 1. So let me put this calculation to the side. In each round, you have exactly one fewer noodles left. So when you start with n noodles, you will always stop this process after n rounds. This is an important detail that I haven't often seen in many of the presentations of this problem. We want the expected number of loops when you're done. This will always be e of x1 plus x2 going to xn when you have n noodles. By the linearity of the expectation operator, this is equal to the sum of the expectations e of x1 plus e of x2 plus so on to e of xn. We can then use our formula for e of xk and substitute in, and like magic, we have derived the formula. We just need to substitute in n is equal to 100, and this is approximately equal to 3.28 loops. Wow, what an amazing solution. Let's now quickly solve the second part of the question, which is the probability of making one big loop. Define a random variable yk to be equal to 1 if when you have k noodles your random selection makes a loop, and 0 if when you have k noodles your random selection does not make a loop. We've already calculated the relevant probabilities in the previous parts of the question. In each round, you are going to lose one noodle, so each subsequent round always has the same number of ends. So we have an independence between yk and yk minus 1. With one noodle, you will always make a loop. So we're going to calculate not making a loop all the way to y2. 
we want the probability that you have not made a loop when you have n noodles, you have not made a loop when you have n minus 1 noodles, and so on, until you have 2 noodles. By independence, this is the product of the probabilities. We can now substitute in for the probability that yk is equal to 0. We just go ahead and put this in, and finally, we need to calculate for 100 noodles, so we take n is equal to 100, and the formula becomes the following. And this works out to approximately 8.9%. And I find this to be quite an astonishingly large probability. In about 1 out of 11 times that you run this experiment with 100 noodles, you're going to just end up with one big loop. It's quite amazing that you don't end up with all of these other loops in between. One out of 11 times, you're going to end up with one giant loop. And it's quite amazing, this counterintuitive probability from picking ends of noodles. What an interesting interview question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.